Okay, now on to the next two classes of arthropoda, the diplopoda and the chilopoda. Up first are the diplopoda, commonly known as the millipedes. Just like the crustaceans, the diplopoda have three major characteristics, which make them diplopods. Up first, we have two body regions. So here we've got the two major body regions, the head and the body. So this is unlike the crustaceans, which have that cephalothorax and body or abdomen. This is just head and body. The regions are delineated by deep segmentation that look different. Uh, so here we've got a millipede, all right? You can see the sort of head region here. If you look on this uh, drawing, that head is facing downwards, and then the body is this nice sort of long thing right behind it. <clears throat> so we've got our two major body regions, the head and the body. And the second characteristic is they have a single pair of antennae. So the crustaceans had two pairs of antennae, right? The diplopods just have one, usually right here. This one's super adorable and little and cute. Look at that. Okay, you can see the head here and then this body reaching back from the head. So two body regions and a single pair of antennae. The third characteristic is simply many legs. We haven't even bothered counting how many legs are necessary to mean many. Specifically though, each body segment in Diplopoda has two pairs of legs. This is significantly more than just the five pairs of legs or more, right, that the uh, we see in the crustacean. And it's that two per body segment that helps us determine that these are diplopods rather than crustaceans. So here you've got a close-up of these uh, legs. We're not even going to try to count them. But you can see we've got these body segments here. Your two legs or two pairs of legs coming off, off of each body segment. So two pairs of legs per body segment for a total of just many different legs. So these are the millipedes. Now, millipedes are very common plant feeders. We see them all over the place. They have no stinger. Uh, they don't have really uh, sharp mouth parts, and they don't usually bite humans. They can have large jaws, so there are some species that might be able to bite if you really bug them a little bit. Uh, but for the most part, they're not dangerous at all. Uh, and those ones that might bite might hurt maybe a little. Not that big a deal. So millipedes are fine. They do secrete a poison from between their body segments, though. Uh, but this poison isn't dangerous to humans. It's more of a nasty taste to keep predators away. Some smaller animals can have issues with this poison, though, so you want to keep that in mind. So primarily, millipedes are plant pests. They're found feeding in the dirt. They're found feeding on young shoots. This is why you can find them under logs, under things in the yard, and they will be feeding on your plants in your garden. They are intermediate hosts for parasites. There's a particular type of worm that infests mammals and birds uh, that will get into these millipedes, but they're not really a uh, problem for humans at all. So otherwise they're really not dangerous. They're just these creepy crawly things that come out from underneath logs when you lift up those logs. Centipedes, on the other hand, uh, do have some dangerous members of the group. Centipedes fall into the third class we're going to look at, the chilopoda. So chilopods have three characteristics that make them part of this class, just like the uh, diplopods. The first is the same as diplopoda, in fact. They have a head and they have the rest of the, the body is, uh, the rest of their body is called the body. So they have a head and a body. So you can see it here pretty straightforward. You've got your head region and your body, your head region and your body. Notice though that their head is pointing forwards as opposed to down like the millipedes. The second characteristic is also like the millipedes. They have a single pair of antennae. So here, close up, this beautiful centipede here, pair of antennae. And these antennae are, are sticking straight forward as opposed to sort of curved down like we saw in the millipedes but they're there one pair of antennae 
Now, the third thing is where it gets a little easy to tell the difference between centipedes and millipedes. While centipedes also have many legs, they only have one pair of leg per body region rather than two. So if you look at the centipedes here, you can see you've got these body regions and then just one pair of legs sticking out from each body region. So here's a comparison between the centipede and the millipede, between the chilopoda and the diplopoda. While the characteristics listed are pretty close, right? Like head, body, one pair of antennae, just sort of the number of legs, it's actually pretty easy to tell the two apart. So first, millipedes have two pairs of legs per body segment. You can see that pretty well here. Okay? While centipedes have one pair of legs per body segment, so that's a pretty good way to tell the difference between uh, the two. But the second is a little easier and it's easier to tell on sites. This is more of a rule of thumb, but millipedes generally have this rounder appearance. Their body is round and sort of worm-like, while centipedes tend to be flat. So if you see something coming out from, you know, you pick up a, a rock or a log in your, your yard and you see something coming out that is rounded with many legs, probably a millipede. See something come out that's flat with many legs, probably a centipede. Really easy to tell uh, the difference. You can also look at their head regions. So look at the millipede here and their head is pointed way down. This is because they feed on plants for the most part and they're going to walk over these plants and feed on them while they're standing on them. Centipedes, on the other hand, tend to be um, predators, so their heads are going to be facing forwards. So centipedes, um, as these predators, they are what we call generalist predators, meaning they will feed on pretty much anything that they can get their little fangs on. Now, they don't have true fangs in, in the way that we think of them, like extra teeth coming out of your mouth or something like that. Instead, they have these modified front pair of legs. These legs attach to venom glands that act as fangs of a sort. So centipedes will grab the prey with these modified front legs, with these fangs, and inject this venom. Venom. So this will subdue their prey, and they will eat whatever little tiny insects they can get their little fangs on. However, because they have these venom glands and because they have these fangs, centipedes can give a very, very painful bite to humans if you try to pick them up. So it can be pretty uh, obnoxious. There are some centipedes that are actually very dangerous to people. So you want to keep this in mind. They, Because they are these predators, they will bite. They will bite humans. They will bite animals. And that can be a big issue. Now, there is a very common type of centipede that people tend to hate. It is the house centipede. You can see this one down here. So it's that centipede with all these crazy looking legs, super, super long. People tend to freak out over this centipede. This centipede is actually completely harmless to humans. Um, it is one of the few species that will infest houses on a regular basis. Most centipedes tend to stay outside. Uh, this one comes indoors. It likes it inside, but its fangs, the, that front pair of legs, are just not strong enough to bite us. So you can pick it up. It, it might try to bite, but it can't puncture our flesh. So it is considered beneficial since it can't hurt humans and it will feed on other insects inside the home. So it'll feed on all these other things that might bite humans. So it is considered harmless to people and beneficial, in fact, even though it looks kind of creepy. Now, notice when I talked about millipedes, I said that they secreted a poison. When I talked about centipedes, I said that they had venom glands, right? Now, this is because there is a difference between something that is poisonous and something that is venomous. I'm sure you've heard these terms used, just used interchangeably before. They're not interchangeable. Okay? They mean specific things. So a poison, this is a substance that, when taken into the body, interferes with normal physiological function. Okay, so it will do something to your body. A venom is a poisonous substance or a poisonous mixture of compounds that is produced specifically in venom glands and then injected into animal tissues using some sort of specialized structure. Things like stingers or spines or fangs, okay? So this act of injecting the venom into an animal is called envenomation. So you've got poison versus venom. 
So <clears throat> when we talk about arthropods, some can be poisonous and some can be venomous. It depends upon the method of how that toxin is delivered to animal tissue. Think about it this way. If you bite it and you die, it's poisonous. If it bites you and you die, it's venomous. Now, we looked at these two organisms, that centipede up at the top there and the millipede down at the bottom. Both of these produce toxic substances, but in very different ways. The millipede is considered a poisonous organism because it just secretes a substance. It doesn't try to inject it into you. The centipede is called a venomous organism because it injects that substance via those modified front pair of legs. All right. So we're going to be talking about the next two or the final two classes within Arthropoda during the next and last lecture of this week. Let me know if you have any questions and I'll talk to you soon.